Lisa J 873 writes, I sometimes see papers with a whole scene as a background. I don't know what to do with them. I know you can sometimes cut individual elements from the paper and use them to embellish a page or use the B-side. But what could you do with the whole scene? Glitter Girl, can you help Lisa J 873 solve her scenic situation? Of course I can. This week we're going to have a look at some papers that are really beautiful when you see them in the shop, but not the easiest papers to use. And I've pulled out these two from October Afternoon. This one from Holiday Style called City Sidewalks, which is from last Christmas's collection. And it has this beautiful city design and snowflakes on the back. And this one from Farmhouse called Gravel Road and it has this beautiful scene of houses and a church and a farmyard and gray and cream stripes on the back. So beautiful beautiful papers but can you actually make a 12 by 12 page with them because they're very challenging to um, to work on top of or cut into pieces when you compare them to patterns that are a lot easier to cut up like these smaller patterns. And they're not quite as obvious as those that would be easier to cut into pieces to make embellishments, like this example, the deck the hall sheet, where if you didn't want to work on top of the whole 12 by 12 sheet, you might start cutting out different ornaments and using them as embellishments. So, and that, you could, you could cut out a tree, you could cut out a building, it's definitely an option, but the challenge on the message board was to see if we could come up with something that would use it more as a full design. So I'm going to give it a try and I've pulled out two different sets of pictures to make two layouts this week and very holiday and out of season so um, a little bit of Christmas in July perhaps. So I have a Christmas photo to go with this and some 4 by 6 photos from Thanksgiving to go with the farmhouse and I've tried um, two different photo sizes on purpose and I'm going to see how I can make these work despite their challenging design. My first recommendation was a design that I use quite a lot and it starts with a 10 by 10 square and that means that I'm going to cut this 12 by 12 pattern down to 10 by 10 and then it'll be a little bit easier to use. And that does mean it's a little bit scary to cut the um, the beautiful scene but I think it will work and I'm going to give it a try. So what needs to happen with a big scene like this is to identify what I do and don't want to include. So I know that I want this part of the design in my 10 by 10 because um, I want the, the farm more than anything else. So I'm going to start from this corner and then I'll see um, where that um, puts my cut lines. Do keep in mind that you don't have to just cut two inches and two inches. I could cut an inch um, from all four sides. I could cut an inch and a half, half an inch, just depending on what bit of the pattern I want to include in the design. Then once I get that to the 10 by 10, I'm going to mat it on a solid color um, paper. And in this case, I think there are two colors that would work really well. You can either go with the brown, which appears in the shadows, or you can go with this gray that appears in the tree trunks and the rooftops. Because um, both of those will be nice dark anchoring colors, and a black um, really would be too harsh against what's here in the design. And the blue is going to be rather hard to match and it's going to be right against there so it's better to have something that's that darker shade either the dark gray or the brown to provide that contrast so I'm just going to add a small border around um, my 10 by 10 square and then working onto a background pattern that's 12 by 12 that's a bit more subtle and I had a look through all the different papers I had from the farmhouse collection and the one I think is a best match is this blue with the cream crosshatch. So here you can start to see what that will look like together and I think those two will work really well because the blues match at the top but then I'll get this contrast of the yellow against the blue at the bottom of the page. There's one downside to that and that's that the A side of this blue is a really lovely pattern for cutting into pieces and I'm going to use the full 12 by 12 so if I really want um, to use the small pieces of this vintage themed paper that I'm going to need to buy another sheet. Um, that's called Attic Trunk by the way. Okay so I'm going to go ahead and get this cut to 10 by 10 and matted so that I can start with that background in place. Here's an idea of how I ended up needing to cut this to get what I wanted in the design and not end up with any awkward cut right through the middle of something that I didn't 
want um, discarded. So I've ended up with three pieces off the edges and these are all pieces I can keep because even though I've kind of uh, eliminated the full design there, I can use that gray and cream stripe, certainly. So I'll take those aside and I have my 10 by 10 in the middle. And then my next step was to start looking for what other papers could work here. And I, of course, can mix other elements from the farmhouse collection. So there's this sheet that I could cut things from and this one with the banners and then some other patterns that I could use either in big pieces or small. Um, but I also wanted to have a look at what wasn't quite so obvious. So I had a look at my scraps. And one thing that's interesting with the October Afternoon Collections is that their color tones are a little bit different than some of the other companies. So without looking at this, I started thinking, um, well, what about something in a yellow? And this pattern on its own from Cosmo Cricut made me think that it would work quite well. But as soon as I put it up against this, I can tell that this is more of a green yellow while this is more leaning toward orange and red. So this is not a good, um, uh, choice, this yellow on its own. Although um, I do quite like the idea of this yellow, the softer yellow on this side, and this contrasting teal, which is a similar shade here. So it's not a full loss. But some other things, when I then realized the orange was so prevalent, I thought maybe some October afternoon orange would work. So I pulled this one out from 9 to 5, and I think this is perhaps too much unless I use it just in a tiny little bit here and there. And I did find some winners in this gray diagonal stripe, or it's not gray, it's green. And this green diagonal stripe, which is the back of this floral, which is an Amy Tangerine print. And I know this doesn't, cor it doesn't match anything that's here, but I think it's a nice tone quality to introduce another color aside from the yellow and blue. So there's definite potential for that one. And this one, which is also Amy Tangerine, this is one of the fabric papers, and the yellow or orange wood grain is a really good match here, and then it has this gray on gray grid. So there's definitely some potential in using those two, even though they don't seem like um, they would be the first thing that comes to mind. So I just thought I would throw that out there and show you that bit of my process. I did also pull this bit of vellum with the clouds, and this is from Neapolitan, and I don't think I'm going to use it today, but I don't think it's a total loss either. There's definitely the potential to do something with this this aqua cloud print and these papers. So maybe if you were cutting out one of the houses or one of the scenes and you wanted something behind it, but you didn't want something heavy, this vellum might be a good choice. Okay, so just an idea. My next step was to figure out which pictures, and I printed two options. I don't like mixing a vertical and a, and a horizontal, a portrait and a landscape. So I, I have two options. I can go with either a single landscape or I have two portrait images from the same day. So what I'm thinking is that this could go in this sort of area of the page. And I want to leave this bit kind of as it is. This is the part of the scene that I want most on show. And I could add in title and journaling and embellishment in this kind of area here. And with one 4x6 photo, I think there's room for good balance. But when I brought in the two 4x6 photos, I think now this is way too heavy and I can't get that scene that's up here at the top. I'm going to cover up the house no matter what I do. And I even thought about what if I really, really overlap them because that, I mean, it's, it's pretty much the same image. Um, it, it's different, but uh, you can still tell what it is. And I'm still not keen on that either. So in this case, I think with these scenic papers, if you want to keep a lot of the design, your best bet is to use a single photo on your layout. I know that's not to everybody's style, but I think that's gonna be the winning option here. So I'm gonna start by um, matting this in the green and then bringing in some of that gray and then uh, we'll go from there. With these two layers cut, I also went ahead and put my journaling on a journaling card. And because there's going to be and um, there's going to be the title and a little bit of embellishment here and I want this to remain pretty much um, as it is so that I'm not covering up too much. I wanted to go ahead and tuck that journaling card away so that I would still have room to include it. So I'm going to put that behind the fabric paper and this is a paper that uh, just comes away like this so it's all adhesive on the back 
And if this were a normal paper and I wanted to tuck something behind it, I could just mark where that card's gonna sit behind and then put my adhesive around but not touching that area so that it would be possible to get the card in and out. In this case, what I want to do is mark the placement and leave part of the backing on. So I'm just going to trace around where the card will sit and then I can cut away the backing here so that everything else will be adhesive but this will be protected. If I make a mistake, I can always cut another piece of paper and put it over the top here and also it doesn't have to be pretty so it's actually okay to just tear it if that's the easiest thing to do. So sometimes it works a bit better. If I can just catch an edge here. And it works a bit better to do something like this. So fold it up and crease it. And then I can just tear away the spots that I want adhesive. Now, as far as the placement, I decided what I wanted to do was use this shadow from the house as a guide. So if I placed it here, I'd end up with this yellow awkwardness that without the rest of the picture on show, it's hard to tell what the brown is. So if I just come up to where that stops and then straighten this mat so it's parallel with the cardstock, and that way I don't have that awkward gap there that makes you wonder what's going on with the picture. And I can adhere all that. That top bit's down there. And then I have the pocket to work here. Nice and easy. Then I'm going to add uh, my paper layer and some other things on top. So I did cut a strip of this turquoise um, pattern whoops, to bring in a little bit more concentrated color and, and I know I'm covering up the super cute typewriter. I really did like the typewriter but I figured I've had, the, I've had it in my stash all this time and I haven't used it with the typewriter and the gray and the yellow is a good color match so I'm just going to go for it. And But of course you could go back and cut out the typewriter and save it for something else or you might have a better idea to actually use that typewriter design straight away because it is super cute. Okay, and so there's a little bit of a injection of a bit more saturated color. And then this is a, a it's an older American crafts tag. I think it was from Campy Trails. And this time there's not going to be writing on this tag. I just want to use it as a bit of a design element because of the colors. But I also want to be able to bring in a little bit of this elsewhere on the page. So I'm just going to cut that in half. So I can start to layer these pieces here. And I want to bring in this little bit of embellishment up here in the corner. So I had a little bit left of this and I'm thinking I'll tuck this underneath here to create a little tab in the corner. Then some of my embellishment that I'm going to add comes from the flower sack in Farmhouse, um, which has all these different die cuts that coordinate with the collection. And I've pulled out three. I've pulled out a little heart and then two words. And I like these up here together, but I'm now, this embellishment cluster is completely lacking in color. I just have the gray and cream and the cream and then this tiny little bit of kind of vintage yellow. So I have this piece from the tag that I cut away earlier. So I'm thinking this could give me that little bit of color here that could help make this work. It turned out that I could get the two word strips to work together if I put the heart in the middle so it didn't look like it was two separate pieces but rather one long banner. And to tie all this together I just brought that little bit of yellow that I cut off from this tag here and a tiny little bit of this turquoise print up here as well. Then repeated that same thing here where I've got a little bit more of that yellow from the tag and I punched a butterfly from the turquoise. So each area where I have embellishment has the same patterns repeated, which means I'm ready for my title and I wanted to show you some options. And I think with a scene like this where a lot of the embellishment is going to come from either the pattern or in relatively small areas of the page, 
it's good to not use a title that's going to be too big and too overwhelming. And I do want to make it clear that this is Thanksgiving, so I'm going to go with a super obvious Thanksgiving title. So I want a, a relatively small letter sticker. Now, October afternoon, do those lovely mini market letter stickers, and those would be a great match here, but I didn't have the right letters to spell out Thanksgiving um, in the colors that would match. So I had a look at other things that I had stowed away and I um, I may have stockpiled the sassafras alphabets when they close their door. So I have quite a few colors in these and um, two different choices that might have worked here. Either the gray, because I've definitely got gray in this um, color combination, or the green, because I picked up the green for that photo mat and I haven't used it anywhere else. So just wanted to show you this little trick for trying, if, you, if you're trying to decide between two or three colors of letter stickers, is to find somewhere you can use the letter stickers as a subtler embellishment and then see how it sits to your eye. So I've added the 09 up here at the top for the year in this little grouping of embellishments to see if it then works well to me to have this green and this green all pulled together. If it says to me that if this green looks out of place, then I know that I can just worry about taking that 09 off and changing it for something else. But in this case, I quite like the 09, so I'm going to go ahead and go ahead. I'm going to go with the green for um, for my title. But that's a really easy way to test and give yourself a little status check in case you're a little worried about the um, the colors being quite right. Because if I stick one letter on top of this paper and then I end up having to pull it off, there may be disaster and I don't have another sheet and I've built everything on that big scene. I don't want to mess it up. So that's my little, um, my little check. And then I'm going to go ahead and use these same letters to p spell out my title. For some finishing touches, I added some of that same ribbon that I used last week just to add a little bit of texture on that tag and a little bit over here. Brought in another heart on this side and then added those same brown pearls, the Pebbles Candy Dots that I used last week. And I um, just wanted to add one last little bit of texture with some Baker's Twine to go under the title. And for that I'm going to use the tiny attacher and this side is easy to staple but I want to be able to staple this side which is further away. So to use my tiny attacher in the middle of the page. I'm just going to put it on a foam mat so that there's something to catch that. And because I want to be able to remove this card, I want to make sure I put the staple high enough that it's not going to catch or get in the way there. Open it out into all the different pieces, but then fold this piece right back under. From here, I can place the staple and press down to attach it and now that will be right into the back of the paper and then on this side I can just use the stapler as normal. So that is my finished page with the farmhouse scenic paper and if you wanted to embellish this even further there's definitely the potential that you could sprinkle some ink around and you could add in some little stamped sentiments on the, the clouds if you like lots of extra little words you could tuck them in or something and um, but that's pretty much it I'm gonna give it a second shot with a slightly different look but following the same sort of idea with the holiday style Christmas scenic paper with that city sidewalks design. This time I'm starting with this Christmas themed paper um, called City Sidewalks from the October Afternoon Holiday Style Collection. And this is from last Christmas season, but I know many of you still have it in your stash, but it's also still available in the store if you are looking at some options for Christmas coming up. So. In this case, I'm going to keep the page 12 by 12. I'm going to not cut this background sheet at all. By the way, my first answer would be use the B-side because the B-side is really pretty snowflake, really easy to use. But the challenge was to use the more challenging scenic design, so I'll stick with this side for now. Now, I'm going to follow a similar technique, but in this case, I'm going to put the paper aside. Just going to work on um, a little area of embellishment that I can then add to that page. And I'm using, again, a single photo, but this time it's smaller. I've printed an Instagram photo at three by three. And then I've grabbed some different bits and pieces. I have um, this envelope and Vellum envelopes come in all different colors. The Pieces of Me kit includes both white and cream. And the cream against this paper is a much nicer match than the harsh white. So I'm, I've pulled that out and then there's a tag to fit inside. So my plan, because that 
paper is way too busy to write on and have it be very legible is to tuck my journaling on that tag and put it in here and then I want to add things on top but I don't want everything there to be sealed away so that you can't get to the journaling that's in the envelope. So what I'm going to do is create that whole little scene and then it's only going to be adhered on this part of the envelope so that everything will still be able to be accessible. The trick to that is not only are you only going to put glue on this top part of the envelope, there's also there, there needs to be nothing that goes over this top edge because even if this isn't adhered, when I go to open it, I'm going to crease it and fold it and all sorts of things are going to go a bit wrong. So everything I want to include needs to be only attached to that part and not have anything go above the top of the envelope. So I'm thinking, I have this doily also from the Pieces of Me kit and it's in white. And I have two of them so if this doesn't work I can try something else but what I'm going to try is misting it in a color to make it coordinate uh, with the pattern paper. I have my handy dandy high tech misting box here ready to go and then I can let that dry and see how the color comes out. In this case it's dried a bit unevenly but it looks fine around the edges it's only the center that looks a little bit different and I only have plans to show the edges of the doily anyway so I think that's just fine so I have my envelope with my journaling card inside and I'm going to start building layers around the edge here this card is from the boarding pass miscellany pack and the idea is to then just start building your layers of embellishment without starting first on on the scrapbook page on the background so everything then can then just be taken to the 12 by 12 page and I can start to look for a good spot to and put that right on top and in this case because there's a large tree here in the scene and there's a tree here in the picture I'm going to add it right on top there so that I'm instead of duplicating it because if I put it over here then I have this it's not very well balanced with the two trees that are about the same size your eye is going to go which am I supposed to look at so if I put it over here then I don't have that other tree competing so I'll go ahead and adhere the envelope and even though it's felon the adhesive isn't going to show because I have all those things on top I want to make an, a, a layer here a horizontal line so that I can hang a little small banner below this. So I'm working everything around the photo and around this shape that I've made here. But because I'm not doing my normal boxes of paper, I need to find different little elements that I can use as anchors to make this work. Then I can do things like put these buttons either side and these little buttons are American Crafts from last Christmas and they're in the store. They come um, in a set of eight. I only have the green left now but there is silver, green, white, and red. So then I could loop, I could use the baker's twine through the buttons and loop through here and through those buttons too. And then I can hang a few tiny little things on that twine to make a banner. Here's where I'm going to finish this page and it's a little bit different than my normal style. It is very much a lot of embellishment with one small photo and not filling the full page. But it does allow me to use this full scene if this was a paper that I really, really wanted to make sure I, I had on show. So it is one option and likewise you could change the corner if you're more interested in this part of the scene and the park speaks more to you than the buildings then just trade the um, the corner and put something in this corner or this corner instead of the bottom half of the page but this can make the big scene work you can have the embellishment and have the full page design to finish it off I used the elf thickers in the candy cane stripe from um, from American Crafts and these small letter stickers from Studio Calico but where I placed them was to find this horizontal line in the design the little bridge that goes over the river and use that as my anchoring point my my writing line as it were and then just kept it going because it didn't quite fit all on the little bridge and then everything lined up here in line with the envelope 
And then with the envelope and the embellishment, just keep everything separate. Anything that is below the fold of the, um, the, the closure of the envelope is going to stay on the page and anything that's on here is going to be able to flip up so that you can access the journaling inside. It's a little different this week, um, but I hope you enjoy a little look at what I would do with these scenic papers. Now your challenge, if you've got any of these scenic papers like this, then that's your challenge. If you don't have these in your collection already, don't worry. I challenge you to use a paper that you find challenging and come up with your way to keep true to your style but still use a paper that's a little bit different than what you would normally have on your pages. Thanks for watching! Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.